I'm going to be putting a new injection pump in my 7380i. Shouldn't be too hard. The pump is just held in with three nuts. You can see one there, one there, and there's another one way down in there underneath all the throttle linkage. I'm going to pull off the all the injector lines and leave them all connected to the pump and pull it out as one assembly. To get to the, to the pump bolts where it's held onto the gear, you just pull off this timing cover right here and you just pull off the three bolts inside. And the pump and everything should just slide out like this. Come out. Got the injection, injector lines off. All eight of them. Got all the wires and hooks from the pump and as well as the top fuel return hose. Just got to, to unhook the input hose to the fuel pump from the fuel filter. And I got the front timing cover off of the pump. Trying to show you that better. So these are uh, three 12 head bolts that would hold the injection pump to the gear. You have a dowel pin, so the, the new pump you can only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about timing. But it's still good just to clean this really good and make like a couple marks so you know where the gear is before you take this apart and just in case uh, the engine turns or something because this gear inside when you pull this off it's just going to be sitting on the teeth inside it, there's not enough space for it to move and go out of timing but just in case if the engine was to move a little bit or something it's good to have timing marks and if you have an automatic put it in make sure it's in park or it's a manual put it in a neutral just in case so your engine doesn't turn any when doing this so this has been messed with before as you can see way too much silicone all over that so I really don't know if this is the original injection pump because uh, this has a Jasper reman engine in it which has about oh, 93,000 miles on it so it's either the pump came with the engine which I'm not really sure or they reuse the old pump. If it's the old pump it has around 214,000 miles and I'm guessing it probably is the original one because you can see it's all covered in dirt and it's leaking. And the this pump has uh, been turned up three flats so you do get a little bit more power and it smokes pretty bad but the new one does have the stock factory setting on it but I do plan on turning it up a little bit. Probably won't go three flats, probably go maybe two flats because it's going to be brand new, it's going to still deliver more fuel than this one because this one's worn out. I mean, it runs good and everything, but sometimes when it's cold you have to push the gas pedal to start it and after you, you start it up when it's warm it uh, blows white, white bluish smoke everywhere of unburnt fuel because that injection pressure isn't high enough to atomize the fuel properly to burn it and you just get unburnt fuel coming out the exhaust. And it's not the head gaskets because it does not smell like any freeze. Which is a good thing because I do not want to be doing the heads on this motor. Which I might have to someday put ARP head studs in it because I would like to put a Hypermax turbo on it someday, but for now I just stay as it is. Pump's ready to come out almost. We've got to take off the three bolts off the timing gear. Finish taking off the bolts and the nuts behind that hold the pump on. Better and show you. There's one right there, and one down there, and there's one way down there which you can't see, which is hardest to get to. But I managed to get it out with just a regular 9/16. So you gotta have to stick it in at an angle like that, which luckily wasn't too tight, otherwise it would have stripped. But that got it off. And you can see I marked the timing. The orange mark right there, and there's one right there if the camera's not picking up, as well as one there and there. So, let's take these four bolts out. You need a full focus, 5 sixteenths full point socket. Old pump is out with the injector lines attached to it, and here's the brand new one. It's a Stanodyne DB2 injector pump. Let's get it out of the bag and have a closer look. Here it is, brand new, it's remanufactured. Stanodyne DB2 injector pump. It's the old one.
And that's the, that one back is the core. I like to keep it, but they charge extra if you don't send it back, so it's too bad. It'd be interesting to tear it down and see what's inside of it, but I've seen pictures of them taken apart. You can see it's marked with red, so you, they don't want you messing with the torque screw. And, uh, this right here is the diamond cover. And this is where your uh, fuel screw is to turn the fuel up. And as well, you can see it's marked red right there. It's red paint, which they don't want you messing with, which, yeah. I'll put it together, right, get it running, and I'm probably going to turn this pump up about two flats. No more. That one's been turned up three flats. So, this, I kind of like the extra power you get from them. Three flats is as much as you want to go without having a pyrometer, and even then, I'm kind of cautious I'm giving it lots of throttle going up hills because I don't want to burn my motor up. I'll show you in a few minutes the screw on the old one. These are where your throttle goes, right here. No spring because that still on the motor. Your idle adjustment and your, how far your throttle travels on full throttle. This right here is your advance, so you give it, right now it's at idle. So as you give it more and more throttle, this advances your uh, injection timing, so your uh, ignition happens sooner because your engine's turning faster. Pretty simple. Get your spiller. This is where your uh, spiller return from the ejectors goes back into the pump. There's also a metering valve in there as well. Your input, and each one of these goes onto the lines, and the, each individual injector for each cylinder. Turns nice. And that right through this line right here is the timing mark you have to align to the one on the engine to get the the static timing set correctly on, on the old one here if you look it's been ground off so there's no timing mark on it here's the new pump with all the injector lines hooked up to it and tightened up as well as with the elbow from the old one where the spool fuel from the injectors returns to the pump you got the new o-ring right there to go in so I guess we'll start putting it back together then Injection pumps in. Got it bolted in into the gear and the back of the housing. And same three bolt nuts as well. As you can see, you know, the camera will focus. I got the timing marks aligned there and there. And there's the loosely connecting injector lines because I'm going to have to bleed it and hook up all the various electrical connections, the throttle cable, and the cruise control. The bleed back line and the, the cover on up front. Got it all together. Just gotta bleed it now and get all the air out of the system. Get all the injector lines are loose. I'm gonna crank it for a little bit and get fuel coming out and tighten them up and try to start it. That one's done bleeding, I'll tighten that one up and continue going along. I got the injectors all tightened up and bled and hope it starts. Blow it some. Neutral. Surprisingly easier than I thought it would. This is how you turn up the fuel on the injector pump. You just take off this triangle plate on the side of it. A lot of fuel will come out. You keep turning it until you see the small Allen key in there, which the camera is not picking up. There's a small Allen key in there. Now, the easiest way I found it to, to line it up is a when you turn the pump, make sure this this uh, slot right here where it lines up to the dowel pin on the timing gear is pointing up. So you just pull off the timing cover for the injector pump and turn the engine over until this is pointing up. And that exposes the 
Allen key inside the rotor or whatever you want to call it, and we turn that clockwise for more fuel and counterclockwise for less. You don't want to turn it more than half a turn or three flats is what this one's set up, set on without a pyrometer, and I really don't see the need for turning it up anymore if you don't have a turbo because there's not enough air to burn the fuel and you just got excessive black smoke. So yeah, then I mean, if you do turn it up too far and the EGTs will get too high and you burn your motor up, burn holes in your pistons and burn your valves up. This way, your pyrometer is really good to have if you want to tune the pump, which I haven't trimmed the new pump up I put in yet, it's still in the stock setting. I'm not going to turn it up any until I get a pyrometer and I'm probably not going to turn it up no more than one and a half to two flats. This does make a slightly noticeable difference in whether the pumps on the stock setting are been turned up, you still get a few more extra horsepower, which is nice. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video, and thanks for watching.